excited. Hi from Brooklyn. What's up? Hope you're doing well. We're so excited to have everyone with us today. So for those students who are joining us, um, we appreciate all of the questions that you have submitted, but know that there is a QA. and uh, My colleague Tyler, as well as my colleague Peaches will be around to answer any questions and feed us any questions. Hi everyone from New York City. Hi from New Jersey. Greetings, we're so excited that you're here. We cannot wait to chat with you. Just give us one more minute and we will get started. But I hope everyone has had a great day. And uh, today's Wednesday, so we're over the hump here. We're <laughs> very pumped about it. <laughs> Hi, everyone just joining us. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. Hi from Boston. I'm from Massachusetts too. I'm from the South Shore. Welcome. So we will go ahead and get started. My name is Joanne Pluff. I will be your moderator. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission and I work in a fantastic office and we are so excited to welcome you to today's Hamilton Hangout, which is a hangout about our opportunity programs here on campus. So with me today are some of our current students as well as the director of the opportunity program. So I wanna thank our students and my colleagues so much for joining us. We are so excited to answer questions. So to get us started, Erin, if you would like to introduce yourself first, that would be excellent. So if you could tell me your name, your title, and hit us with your favorite song. All right, so Erin uh, Ray, I'm Director of Opportunity Program uh, at Hamilton College, pronouns are he, him, his. My favorite song, ah, that's tough. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this one. So I will go with uh, ooh, Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. That's, that's, okay. that's what I'll go with. Yeah, that's what I'll go Love with. That. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Crystal, if you could introduce yourself. Now we'll get started with our students. So Crystal first. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Crystal. I'm, I go by she, her, hers. Um, I'm a junior. I major in biochemistry and Chinese from Utica, New York. Um, so do I have to hit up a favorite song or is that just for Aaron? Sure. <laughs> uh, I don't have a favorite song, um, but I've been listening to a lot of John Myers lately. So that's my vibe so far. Cool. Denzel. Hi, everyone. My name is Denzel. I'm a junior here at Hamilton College. I'm from New York City. I'm a public policy uh, major with a double minor in statistics and philosophy. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I think my favorite song is Bounce the Floor by Local H. Awesome. Kayla. Hi, everyone. I'm Kayla Gomad. I am a senior from Middletown, Connecticut, and I'm a world politics major. Um, and my favorite song, I, I don't know why the first thing that came into my head, probably because I'm just like a kid at heart, was Hakuna Matata. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to say my favorite Classic. song. I can't think Classic. of anything else. <laughs> Love it. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Like I said, my colleague is in the chat and he, they are able to answer any questions, but please know that there is a Q&A. Um, so if there's something burning that comes up, you can feel free to send that question through and Tyler will let me know. So I will get us started with a couple of questions. Um, so my first question is going to be for our senior panelist, Kayla. So Kayla, view from the top. What would you tell opportunity students who are starting their journey here at Hamilton? What was your biggest piece of advice that you want to share? Oh, <laughs> biggest advice. Um, I think I would say be confident in who you are, but also be flexible because Hamilton will definitely push you to be your best self and you will learn so much about yourself in the process and some things you can kind of learn about yourself and develop and grow and some things do like some habits or things that will kind of shed, but also have a solid foundation and identity coming in. Awesome. Love that. So know your, know thyself, which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it. <laughs> Love it. 
So Erin, if you could please just give us a brief overview of the program, um, starting with the summer program and what students could expect. That would be awesome for those of people who have not been through the process or not really familiar with the HEOP process. Yeah, yeah, great. So um, we are an office of four. Uh, it's myself. We have an assistant director, a counselor, an administrative assistant. Um, and I, I call us the dream team. I, I'll be fully transparent. I only started at Hamilton in January. Uh, so I'm the new person in the office, but the, the experience since January has been overwhelmingly positive and really everyone at Hamilton has been, been super welcoming. Uh, but we are a program of about 160 students, give or take, depending on the year. We have students from all over the country and all over the world, um, which is what for me makes it so great working in a program like this is just the different backgrounds and the identities that our students have just make it really engaging and, and Every day is a different challenge, um, but but it all uh, works out in the end. Um, I know a lot of you who are probably on this panel are wondering about the summer program. And yes, we do have a required five week summer program, uh, admitted opportunity program students go through um, before the academic year begins. Um, and, and I'll tell you, I was an opportunity program student at my alma mater and I remember getting my acceptance letter and being like awesome and then seeing summer and I was like oh no I'm gonna talk to the football coach and he'll take care of it and little did I know that that's not how it works um and so I was really apprehensive about going into a program that required me to give up the summer after my senior year of high school um but it was the best decision I ever made and, and I am still connected with a lot of my friends from that summer program experience and it also helped to just give me a heads up on what college expectations are like I grew up uh, in the public education system um in rural upstate New York where I you know I thought I, I thought I could write um and then the professors in the summer uh, showed me that I was wrong about that. Um, but it really gave me a leg up on my, my peers who were coming into college and, and helped to build up my confidence to make sure I knew not only that um, I could do the work, but that I also belonged at the institution. So that's what we do uh, in our summer program. It's, it's going to be intense. I'm not going to, to lie to you. It, it's good, especially after the, the last year and a half that, that you've all experienced in high school. Our, our summer program is definitely, I think some of the upper class students will call it an academic boot camp. I haven't personally experienced it yet, but we'll also do fun things that you will build memories. Um, and then I also know that rumors spread like wildfire and that students are concerned with cell phones being taken away during the summer. And as Kayla's making the face now, Say it she, loud she so everybody that. hears, Aaron. <laughs> we will not be taking students' cell phones uh, during, during the summer program. I know that that is what happened in the past, uh, but that is not going to much to Kayla's. <laughs> <laughs> we are not taking cell phones. So if you were concerned about that, um, you have my word, you will keep your cell phone. Now, if you're on your cell phone during class, we'll have to have a conversation. But um, but the goal of the summer program is to introduce you to Hamilton, in, introduce you to key partners around campus and, and make sure that you have as strong of a start to your Hamilton career as possible. And then we work with you throughout all four years. So you, you, you're able to come to our space. Um, we have tutoring available to students. We, we meet with you throughout the year to make sure things are going well and to kind of help um, with, with any issues issues that come up. So um, we're, we're really excited to welcome anyone who decides to come to Hamilton through the Opportunity Program. And I'll pass it back to you, Joanne. Thanks. So we actually had a pretty good question that came in uh, from an anonymous attendee. And I think everybody just wants to know, do you know if things are going to be virtual this year or what's the plan? For the summer program? Yeah. So our plan is in person, right? And like if the program was to start today, we'd be in person. But you know, these variants are kind of taking over the US. So I can't say with 100% certainty that we won't have to pivot. But as of today, we are planning for an in-person um, program. We are waiting for confirmation from the COVID task force on what the sort of protocols are going to be. Um, but uh, all all things point to an in-person summer program. And actually last summer, Hamilton was the only program in the entire state of New York that had an in-person portion of the summer program. It was two weeks virtual and two weeks in-person. So if we can do it 
at the like height of the pandemic last summer when no one knew what was going on, I think we can we can have a really strong in-person summer program this summer. Awesome. Thank you so much. So Denzel, do you want to share some of the highlights from your participation in the summer program? Sure. Um, well, first I'm going to say that um, I'm kind of sad they're not taking away phones. That's a character building experience because <laughs> we all went through that. So, uh, uh, uh. Um, but just kidding. But um, I think what I really gained from the opportunity program was really meeting like the opportunity staff um, who would support me throughout my four years here. Um, meeting some professors I built uh, great relationships with really early on and I've continued to take classes with them and they've been strong supports and I know I can always reach out to them and then um, like Aaron was saying from his own experience um, you do get a leg up on people you have a friend group um, you know the professors you know campus before everybody else does you know where to eat you know where your favorite places to study are you're not really figuring these things out um, like everybody else is. And so you get that leg up and you really already have like a support system in place and um, you know friends that you can rely on and people who have been through similar experiences as you. So I think that's that's that was great. Awesome, thank you. Crystal, so I hear that during the summer program, there are some excursions. Do you wanna tell us about your favorite excursion on the summer program? Yeah, I, I think so, I think, I think we're, if we're doing in person, it should be the same for this upcoming summer. But um, I remember in my year, we have uh, like these weekend trips um, and some of the places, I think it varies between year, but one of the key features of the summer program is definitely that first week where um, you go have fun in, in the camp. So uh, I think that was my favorite part. It was a bonding experience. Um, I also like that one week where we went to volunteer in Utica and it was kind of a good day, good summer day and just go out and help out. I think I was placed in, in this gardening, a garden and all day I was just like, you know, um, pruning the stuff. And I had a taste of my first like uh, wild mint leaf and that was horrific, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was great. It was great. I liked it. Awesome, thank you so much. So Crystal, you mentioned something pretty important. We have um, a lot of people in the chat that came from all over the country. So as a native Utican, right? What are some of the things that during the summer you should think people should all do? We have some pretty cool spots in the city and I figured you may be one of the people to direct this question to. Ooh. Um, I mean, Utica is known for the food. So definitely uh, order out in Utica, I mean, it's probably pretty easy now with all the uh, online services and delivery services. Um, so ordering different uh, diverse food. I love this one pho place in, uh, in Utica that sometimes um, we also have Jitney services on campus. So um, that runs to Utica as well with, on the weekends. Um, and so my friends would hop on a Jitney and go eat pho. Um, and it's, mm. it's amazing. Um, I think down the hill, even just within in Clinton as well, there's also some cool shops that you can visit. Um, Utica Coffees and uh, Creme Maria uh, was definitely the best uh, gelato place in town. Um, yeah. Awesome. So we're going to switch gears just a little bit here just to, to go over some academic questions. So I will direct this one to you, um, Aaron. What can we expect with uh, academic advising? Yeah, so great question. Um, so there's, there's a lot happening at Hamilton uh, for academic advising, not just in our office. So in the opportunity program, you will have an OP advisor. Um, that OP advisor uh, will work with you on not just your academics, um, but on you know checking in on personal challenges. How, how are things with the roommate? Are, is your work study job going well? How are things at home, right? Um, but Hamilton is also introducing uh, it actually just introduced the, the new Alex advising program, um, which is for every incoming Hamilton student. This is the first year, the Hamilton class of 2025 will be the first class to have it. And you'll every student will be assigned a, a, an Alex advisor and they'll serve, it's actually modeled after HEOP advising. So um, we're the originators, I guess, but um, every student, whether they're opportunity program, posse, Questbridge, any student, We'll have an Alex advisor who kind of be your, your go-to person, your point person that you go to with questions, right? Like there's a lot going on on the college campus and Hamilton has a ton of resources. We have an oral communication center, right? So 
it could also be overwhelming. Like there's almost too many resources to keep track of and it can be intimidating. So if you have a go-to person like your, your opportunity program advisor or your Alex advisor that you can ask questions um, and get some guidance to help help you know thyself and help you get to the point where you feel comfortable knowing yourself. Um, so in the opportunity program, the, we, we try to meet with students at least every other week, especially during the first year. Um, if students are struggling academically, we'll probably ramp that up a little bit more. Um, and then as you progress through your time at Hamilton, the, the amount of required meetings will decrease um, if things are going well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Awesome. So one of the big things, um, obviously, we're known for the open curriculum here at Hamilton. And for some students, that can be overwhelming. So I'm going to throw this one back to Kayla as a senior that has officially navigated the open curriculum. Can you talk about your experiences? Sure. I'm trying to think back now because I'm now completing the major writing thesis. I'm like, that's just so beyond me. But I think I definitely took, I had an idea that I wanted to be in government, but within the government department, there are like different branches of government that you can focus on. Um, but I also just took like my freshman year to just experiment and take all these different courses, which I think is really unique to Hamilton where you don't have like math you don't have to take math like I haven't touched math since he out just let let that be known like, I don't do stem so um I took a lot of time just to like check out the different departments so I checked out government I checked out Africana I checked out um philosophy even so that was something that I really appreciated and so then after taking those classes you can kind of narrow it down like, okay I really had a good experience with this professor or this department seems really interesting and also with the advising you can a bunch of questions as well. Um, and so the open curriculum, we can really just pursue anything that you want. And even within, once I declare world politics, uh, we do have like, I think core five classes, but then after you finish those core courses, you can choose like a theme or an area, uh, like in the world that you want to focus on. So like my focus is on poverty and development. And within the major, you're supposed to take classes outside of the department that relate to that field. So mm -hmm. even once you declare the major, it's still open in that you can design your own study, so. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us because I think it's something that is on every student's mind is, so I get to pick my own classes, but is there help? Um, and I'm sure through Aaron's office that they will also assist you along with our Alex advisors. Um, we did get a question, Erin, so I will direct this one at you um, as things could probably change or most likely change. What are some of the classes that students are going to take during the summer program? Yeah, so uh, students will be taking a physical education course um, that is designed to help students fulfill all their physical education requirements at Hamilton during the summer. So that includes swimming and yoga and I'm not sure exactly everything like I said I'm new and I'm gonna try to do all of it this summer for the first time uh and then students will have a math course they will have either a chemistry or biology course they will have a writing course they will have a philosophy course they will have a government course an oral communication course are you still with me um uh, you will also have a a what's called campus psychology but basically is like intro to college 101 um, and then you have routine for learning um, which is essentially like a, a college study skills course so i'm sure i can't see anyone's faces except for the panelists but i'm sure i'm seeing some panicked faces maybe some eye rolls um, that sounds like a lot it is a lot you're not taking every single one of those courses every single day so you don't have to completely panic um, but it is it, it is a lot but it, it's designed to really prep you um, for, for the rigor that is Hamilton. Granted, at Hamilton, you don't take typically four courses per semester. Um, so it's, it's, it's more than that. But um, some of the courses like oral communication um, and government are focused on public speaking and debating skills. And um, routine for learning is focused on, like I said, time management and, and study skills. And, and uh, the campus psychology courses Really, I've been told, because I haven't taken it myself, but I've been told from students that was a place where they could kind of 
learn about how things work at campus, but also was a place for them to vet. It's co-taught by an associate dean of students and the director of the counseling center. So um, it's, a, it's a relatively popular class among students. So um, it is a lot, uh, but uh, students, I think as I talk to the older students, I think the, the first year students are still like, what, what, I don't even remember my summer. But as you progress and, and students back me up on this, but like you look back at it more fondly than you did in your, your first year of college. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Denzel, do you remember if you were able to use other facilities like the pool, there's the driving range, there's the weight room? Like, what was your experience with that? Or were you tired? Did you just want to sleep? Talk about it. Um, yeah, I remember being able to use, we had access to the gym and the pool. Um, if we're, for the summer, I don't know how they're going to do it. That's an Aaron question, not a me question for sure. But um, we definitely had access. And then in terms of like, like being tired, I guess I would say that like the days were pretty long because your schedules are like very structured. So like, you wake up at like seven in the morning and like I forgot one class the exact same class then but like it did feel like it ended like not that late but then on top of the work that you had to do for the classes like your day ended up being pretty late and then you had to um be back in your dorm by like a certain time too so it was yeah so I think I would say that like those facilities are open for sure and that I was like there were definitely days where I was tired yeah mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give this question to every, uh, maybe two of the panelists. I'll do Kayla and let's say Crystal. So someone asked, what was the biggest challenge you experienced during the summer program? Kayla, I'll have you go first. I have to think. Um, Remember unless. Kayla, you think fondly of your, don't no, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Very fondly. Um, let's see. Unless you're ready, Crystal. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it. Okay. Um, I mean, in my year, our phones were definitely taken. Um, also, my laptop and everything, all the electronic devices. So one of the difficulties for me was definitely, you know, like Denzel said, you have long days, you have classes to take, you know, ranging from seven o'clock in the morning. You go, the first thing you do is go to the gym. Um, you get woken up by these uh, like physical alarm clocks so not even your phone so like my alarm clock broke once and I remember having to like panic to wake up um like oh I gotta get to the gym at seven in the morning um but yeah the days are pretty long and sometimes you might not have time to do homework and especially when you don't have your digital de devices you have to go to computer labs to do work and then you have um your um sort of your curfew. So you can't access these facilities after a certain times. So that was a struggle for me. Um, but I envisioned that that would change since we'll all have our digital devices and we can all set alarms in our own phones. Um, so that wouldn't be too bad. But yeah, I remember like being maybe a few minutes late to a certain uh, meeting and then having to write up like a five, pa five page report about why I'm late because I was studying in a computer lab. Um, that was my worst experience. But other than that, I really enjoyed the program. Thank you. <laughs> Kayla, you ready? I think so. I think for me, my biggest challenge was like time management. And not to say like I, I was also like very active and busy in high school. I think it was just like a different type of management. I don't know really how to describe it, but just knowing and recognizing how long it takes me to get certain things done because I feel like in high school I'm like oh I have a reading a 15 to 20 page reading to do like that can take me I don't know 45 minutes but it's very different when like now you're in college and this is like college level of work it's not going to take the 20 30 minutes it usually does to finish an assignment like it did in high school so I think that was a really really big adjustment that I had to make awesome thank you so much for sharing so let's talk a little bit about um, like the social scene, things like that. Before we get started, we didn't introduce where all of you are. Um, so Kayla, can you tell us where you are? And I just want to say with a disclaimer, where Kayla is, is where everyone aspires to be. But Kayla, go ahead. <laughs> so I currently live in Rogers Estate, which is like, I guess, um, this was things like half a mile off of campus, off of the main part of campus. Um, it's basically, I'm also the RA down here, so that's why I have like the high ceilings and big doors, everything like that. I also have a fireplace. I'm afraid to use it, but it's there. Um, 
I don't know. We have our own kitchen, pantry, living room, dining room. All the, and we have a library, our own library down here. So it's, it's very nice living as a senior, I will say. <laughs> Denzel, where are you today? Um, I'm in South, so I'm the fourth floor right for South, and Kayla definitely has it better than I do, that's for sure. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys are lucky, um, you'll probably be in South for the summer program, because that's where um, we all were for the summer program. So this will be your dorm. Awesome. Crystal, where are you zooming in from? Also for my room, I live in uh, Scanandoa, which is uh, down the hill. It used to be a hotel, so it's really nice. Um, I'm in a double. Um, I have my own bathroom and it's really spacious. Um, also my own shower head too. So I don't have to, I basically don't need to leave the room. This is where people who need to quarantine go to quarantine because everything is all set in here. Um, but I love it. That's awesome. So uh, a athletics, Kayla, do you want to talk about being an athlete as well as participating in OP? Uh, sure. Um, I, are you talking specifically about like the summer or just like once you're on campus, like being an athlete on campus? Life in general, figuring it out. Again, it was a big adjustment because I, in my high school, like we never really had a lifting schedule, dynamic fitness, which is like our conditioning for preseason. Also, I play basketball. I didn't specify, but I'm a four-year member of the basketball program. Um, I think just, it was just a whole shock physically. And so not only was I like physically just out of it, but then also like academically, it was just like tr trying all these different classes that I mentioned before. So it was just like, not necessarily overstimulated, but it was just a lot at once. And so again, kind of what I mentioned before, being flexible to all that is happening. Um, but honestly, like having OP and also having a team was perfect for me. It just felt like I had two families kind of going in. And so I wasn't really as stressed socially to kind of like fit in because I already have like two groups. Um, I do spend a lot of time with my team, but I also spend a lot of time with my friends that I made in the opportunity program. Like we're still really, really close. Um, so I guess that's kind of the tip of the iceberg, at least when it comes to athletics, but I love it. <laughs> Denzel, no, I know from personal experience that you are involved in a lot of different things on campus. So was it difficult for you to get involved in different clubs and activities? Um, no, I think it was difficult to manage getting into so many clubs and activities, but definitely not that difficult to get involved. There's like a club fair at the beginning of like the fall semester usually, and like all the clubs kind of advertise themselves and like you can like go around and see you want see what you want to join. And then a lot of my other involvement is like work study related. So um, in terms of that, like on Handshake, there's always like on campus postings for different job opportunities if you're interested. And then there's some that aren't posted that you have to like kind of navigate and network like the Hamilton campus for like talking to professors or just asking around for certain positions and if it's like available but for the most part I would say that no it's like pretty easy to get involved but if you do too much you can definitely overwhelm yourself. Can you also tell um, our fellow Hamiltonians what is Handshake because they may not know. Oh yeah sure Handshake is kind of like um, it's like a job posting like a uh, website it's kind of like um indeed or like any of the other um like job posting boards or sites that you like would navigate so yeah awesome Erin we had a question come in about housing for the summer um so the question was how will it work will you be paired up in doubles triples quads are we using the questionnaire does Erin pick how are roommates and housing selected <laughs> Yeah, I picked names out of a hat and uh, I figured. that will determine uh, which students are living where. No, so what I can tell you is we are living in Carnegie um, this summer. I, I haven't been, so you're going to have to rely on one of our other panels. But they're shaking their head yes, like, oh, that's that's not bad. That's So it's quad-style living. So four students to a quad, two per room, shared bathroom. Um, I've been told it's pretty nice, but don't quote me on that because I haven't been in it yet. Um but we will have, it, it'll be a separate questionnaire than what Res Life sends, um, which usually comes, I assume, in, in May or June. Um, but it'll be part of 
uh, the registration that you fill out for specifically the summer program and we'll do our best. We pride ourselves on, um, you know, making good roommate matches or sweet mate matches in this, in this case. Um, and uh, yeah, I, that's all. I have a, a blueprint of Carnegie, but that's about all I have of, about Carnegie. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to shake it up really fast. Know that I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to each ask each one of you on the panel. Um, so let's start with Denzel. Favorite food in Hamilton? Bang Bang Chicken, but they only served it like one time in the past like year and a half. So. Bummer. Kayla, favorite food? Uh, chicken parm salad at diner. Ooh. Crystal? Um. Definitely diner food, um, but I also love Opus, um, especially the Opus lunch is really good. Nice. Aaron, do you have a favorite food? I've only been to Opus, uh, and I had a really awesome bagel, everything bagel with cream cheese and a latte on yesterday. I was there Solid. yesterday. That was my it. first time. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Highly recommend. Awesome. So um, I'm going to ask each one of the students because I think this this question, the answer to the question could vary. So what is your favorite event of the year, Denzel? I really like going to like the student concerts that are performed by like the um, different music groups on campus, even though I don't play an instrument, all of my friends do. And it's always really great to just go and support them. Um, there's been less of those, obviously, because of COVID, but hopefully we'll get back to where they were before, where they were like pretty uh, frequent. So that I would say that. Awesome. Kayla? One of the first things that came to mind was FedFest. And I think just because like sometimes it's like you get a little dreary in the winter and everyone's just kind of down, it's gray, and you can't really recognize other people because you're just shuffling around, like trying not to fall in the snow. Um, and I think FedFest is just kind of like perfect timing, picks people up, you get hats and hot chocolate and all these different events going on, just kind of. Um, and when does FedFest happen? It's February, right? Yeah, February. Yeah. Middle of winter when it's a little dark at four o'clock, um, but it was pretty cool this year because it was spread out over a whole month, right? I believe the events were much longer, so we we had to pivot a little, and it was still equally as. Uh, Crystal, favorite event? Um, I think first thing that came to mind was also Fet Fest. Um, it, I like the big events that sort of brings everyone towards a certain spot on campus. Um, whether it's like getting free swags and stuff. But I also really enjoy um, any late night events or events hosted by certain clubs. Wherever there's food, that's where I will be at. Um, and I also really enjoy the food trucks that Hamilton's been offering um, for free for the for every Fridays starting like a few weeks ago. Um, really getting to try the local uh, food and from places locally. Um, so those are my favorite events. Awesome. So... Do, let me see, I'll have Kayla answer this and I'll have Denzel answer this, not to leave you out, Crystal, but um, did you find that being part of the OP program is your entire social identity? Denzel, want to go first? Um, I would say no. I mean, maybe for a time when I only knew the people in the OP program because it was still the summer. And so those were the only people I met at Hamilton. But like from there, I would say that like, um, I kept like in contact with some of the people I was pretty close with in the OP program, but not every single person for sure. Like I'll say hi to them if I see them on campus, but you know, like they, I, we don't hang out like every other day or something like that. And so I made like other, other friends as the, as like my time at Hamilton, um, kind of progressed and I joined things that interested me and like some of the people in the OP program, we all had like different interests. So we kind of just split in our own way. So no, I wouldn't say that my social identity was just um, like the OP program. What about you, Kayla, as you're finishing up your life here at Hamilton? How do you feel that it's affected your identity? Don't remind me. I know I'm old. Um, I <laughs> definitely don't think it's um, like OP is my entire identity. I think that one, Hamilton pushes people to like be more than just one thing in general, but also, um, Kind of building off of what Denzel said, once you join like different clubs, you find things that you're interested in, your friend group naturally just grows. Um, like I, I'm 
like I have my team. I'm, I'm trying to think of the different things that I do. Like I have friends from my on-campus job. I have friends from my orientation trip still. So your network of friends is constantly growing. So you're, by the time you're a senior, um, you're definitely not defined only by the opportunity program. Awesome, that's really great to hear. So for our students that are coming from outside of New York, we talked a little bit about the city of Utica. Um, how accessible is getting to Utica and how often are students going there? Denzel, you wanna hit this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have an on-campus uh, like ride share service called the Jitney that will take you down to um, Utica and it like runs for, I don't know the hours, it runs for most of the day though. Um, and so like, it's pretty easy to get um, into Utica. Obviously if you have a private car, um, you can drive yourself. And then in terms of like how frequently people are going, I I don't know the answer to that really, but I would say like, like, you know, when like every maybe like week or two, like, I don't know. It just kind of depends on like who you are, I feel like. And like a lot of times people will go if they want to like order food from somewhere off campus or like, for example, like now I haven't really gone to Utica, but the equivalent for me has been like, maybe like once a month I'll like order something from like a place in Utica and have it delivered. Cool. Crystal, I'll have you answer this question. What are some things that you can do off campus for fun? Off campus. Um, I've been to the movie theater in New Hartford a few times. I think that's pretty cool. Having to get, take a break. I, they just renovated the movie uh, theater, but like um, they have these comfy chairs that you can recline back now. I remember I almost fell asleep in there once, uh, but it was really, really comfy. Uh, so there's some places that you can go to. I know there's also uh, places that um, some clubs might host. Uh, there's a orchard that you can do like apple picking. Um, there's other probably fun stuff, but I'm not very, um, I don't really go off campus that often, um, but there are definitely a lot of places to go to for fun. Yep, and also know that the city of Syracuse is about 45 minutes away. Um, and typically when there's something big going on, some of the student groups will get shuttle services. Um, the city of Albany is about an hour and 20 minutes away. So if you can provide yourself transportation or can bunk up with friends, there's typically something going on in many of those cities. And let's not forget about the massive mall in Syracuse that has, I mean, I think the only store it doesn't have is Gap, which is shocking. Um, but still there are so many options for students to find what they're looking for within um, the area. We did have a question come in, and this one I'll direct towards you, Erin. Are there resources available for city low-income students? And if so, if yes, um, what are they? Yeah, I, there, there's a ton. Um, not all are just specifically for students from inner city, um, but our program is one. Um, but there are, is also a number of tutoring centers. Um, there is also C's. And again, I'm new, so I don't always remember what the acronyms stand for. Uh, student emergency, something, something. Essentially, it is a, a, a committee that will, um, students can apply for emergency funding for a variety of things, whether it's transportation, it is their laptop broken. Yes, student emergency aid society love it yes yes um i was close i was halfway there 50 percent. Uh, thank you thank you peaches or that was that was tyler and peaches oh you both did it great um so they like for for a student who money's a concern right and if your laptop breaks like that is whew, that can be rough right but knowing that there is funding out there to help students not have to worry about those like those are those would be typically barriers for for students on high high financial aid um that it's it's amazing it, it was one of the reasons that i really wanted to come to a school like hamilton like it has resources um to to support students we have the counseling center um what, really when the pandemic began i wasn't here but uh the stories i've heard like students who couldn't go home like hamilton uh, had Airbnbs for students and 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 allowed students to stay 
uh, over breaks and and got students hot spots and 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 laptops and iPads and whatever students needed to be able to continue their education at Hamilton remotely. Hamilton did it, and that is not something that every institution can do. Um, so where there's a will, there's a way. If there's something students need. If they ask for it, Hamilton will work with them on, on getting those resources. And that's, I think, a great thing about our office is we have some resources to, to aid students and we can help guide students to other resources. But then the Alex advisors as well for students who are in our program will be able to do, do the same. But tutoring awesome. centers, there's a QSR, oral communication center, writing center. Students probably know more than, than I do, but yeah. So if there's help, you just need to find you or your Alex advisor, it sounds like. Awesome. Yeah. Crystal, can you talk a little bit about the diversity on campus and what it's like to be a student of color? Um, I mean, personally, for me, it doesn't make too big of a difference. Um, I mean, I just focus my studies, go to classes, and I know that it for some people, it might be a, a bigger issue if you are from a community that is more diverse and Hamilton is a PWI at the end of the day. So you will have a lot of, um, I guess, white peers um, and peers who might be very different from you. Um, but it also depends on, you know, you get to decide who your social circle is and maybe those are people that you identify with and maybe um, that helps you form a club or participate in certain events. Um, so I think there are ways to go about that if you are feeling insecure or uh, you don't feel comfortable in, in a certain space. I feel like with most of, most of us and uh, most students I know, you always find some way to go about that. Um, but personally for me, it was a big deal. I'm very active in other um, on-campus uh, clubs and activities as well. So. Thank you. We have a great question that came in actually from students who are looking, listening live. So this is directed to our students. So if you could name a building you find yourself using most often and why? Denzel. Um, so COVID made me a little bit of a hermit. So uh, a lot of time in my room now, but before COVID, I used to spend a lot of time at Sadoff because it's like right at the center of campus and I really enjoyed being centrally located. It was really easy for me to go from there to any place that I had to go to. This was, it was also like, there's also a lot of times I was taking like classes in um, like science and like STEM classes, which is on one side of campus. I was also taking classes in KJ. So like that central location was really nice to be able to move from um, like one place to another since they're like kind of on opposite sides of campus. But now I would say that I do more stuff in my room, but for the most part, State Office is probably my favorite building on campus. Awesome. Kayla, what about you? Um, I'm very much like a morning person and I also very much need natural light. Like my brain will kind of stop working as soon as it gets dark. So my favorite yeah, spot- pretty, is Seems like you have a pretty good setup for the natural light for those yeah. who are looking behind <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> So I would say KTSA or a science center, um, just because they have like really big windows and I just usually camp out right there and I usually get my work done more often than not if my friends aren't distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Crystal, favorite place? Science center, hands down. Um, I mean, I am a science major. All, all of my classes are basically in there, but I there's also other reasons, right? It's like a big hub for not just the science geeks, but also there's Opus, right? And get coffee anytime. Um, and I also do research on campus, so it's also close to my labs. Um, and so it's convenient. Um, there's also the greenhouse on the third floor, and I'm part of an aquaponics program. So sometimes I go in there, check on the fish, feed some fish, and there's also a lot of, yeah, big windows and stuff. And I, I like the light side, yes, a lot. Very cool. So I'll just remind everyone that's with us tonight, we have about 15 minutes left. So if you're looking to get the answers to those burning questions about life on Hamilton's campus, uh, do feel free to put them in the chat, but I'm going to do a quick, let's see, we will start with Aaron actually. What do you like about working at Hamilton and what brought you to Hamilton? Yeah, what brought me to Hamilton? Um... So the first time I ever visited Hamilton's campus was as a student athlete. I was on the track and field team. Um, and so that was my first time being on campus and I was blown away 
by two things. One, the campus was beautiful, but two, Aretha Franklin was performing that night. And I was like, what? They got Aretha Franklin? I think when I was in college, the only performing groups that we ever got were, uh, I think we had Yellow Wolf, who is some Southern rapper who has a rat tail. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Gym Class Heroes, who probably none of you are old enough to remember. So uh, not us, Joanne, not us. Um, so I was really impressed about Aretha Franklin. But um, what, what really drew me to Hamilton is the, the, the history, um, especially within the Opportunity Program, like the director who served before me was director for a very long time. And she is a giant in the Opportunity Program world. And then the woman before her was also a giant. So I'm following in the footsteps of two, two giants. Um, but then also how much Hamilton supports the Opportunity Program. Um, some of our funding comes from New York State, but a majority of it comes from Hamilton. Um, Hamilton puts a lot of resources so that this program not only exists, but can thrive. Um, and so I, I was looking for, I grew up in, in rural upstate New York, um, which when I was younger, I didn't want to be in. And now that I'm getting older and starting to raise my own family, um, it, it's actually really attractive. Um, and also I heard there's a bison farm near Hamilton's campus. Yeah. So I've never actually physically seen a real live bison in my life. So I'm really looking forward to seeing those bison. Totally random, but I'm transparent. So bison. Fair enough. It's only, it's only down the hill to the right. There you go. See, I'll walk. <laughs> Field trip um, this Crystal. summer. <laughs> so Crystal, what brought you to Hamilton? Um. I think financial reasons is definitely a big part. I, I didn't really, I don't know. I, when I was choosing colleges, I know that I like liberal arts. Um, I like a small uh, campus, um, but it, it's actually when I got to campus and I take classes, took classes and um, went through the summer program that I really actually realized that I really, really like this environment. I can't see myself in the university, um, but mainly it was for financial reasons. And I know that Hamilton is a good school and um, it can support me doing science and doing um, taking classes in other disciplines, um, but financially, you know, HOP is helping me and as well as uh, scholarships that Hamilton has provided and the various opportunities I can do as a student, whether it's like research or um, internships and shadow opportunities and the opportunities um, post Hamilton and all of the speaker series and seminars that Hamilton's and different professors and departments would host. Uh, I think that was a big part of my decision as well. Awesome. Denzel, what brought you here? Um, so similar to Crystal, there were some financial reasons. I also attended a diversity overnight program that I really enjoyed, which was an opportunity for me to come to campus um, before I had formally accepted and get to sit in on classes, um, kind of see what campus was like, uh, meet students. And I really enjoyed like the small class size, um, the open curriculum was really attractive because I knew there were a lot of subject areas at Hamilton that like my high school didn't offer that I wanted to explore and I didn't really want to take classes that I didn't like I just wasn't interested in like I had to do in high school. Um, so those were really appealing. And so I just really fell in love with the idea of the open curriculum. The people I met on campus were like amazing. Everybody was really nice and friendly. Um, and then I saw how strong the opportunity program was on campus as well. And, and yeah. Awesome. So Kayla, I know you've had a couple of minutes to think about it. And as our senior, I was saving you for last. Students know that we still have time for questions. Even if you think it's a silly one, we are super excited to answer anything related to Hamilton. Um, and for whatever we don't get to, we'll for sure reach out to you um, at a later date. But Kayla, why don't you share with us, what brought you to Hamilton? For me, it was definitely the people. And I feel like a broken record because I hear it so much as well. It's just like, oh, the people are great. The people are great. But like genuinely, you can have, there's professors and um, workers on staff that like you can just see once or have a class with them one time and they'll still say hi to you. Like you could take a class with them freshman year and senior year, they'll still say hi. And when I had my overnight for basketball, I saw that I was walking around campus with some of that. Um, the players and they were, just, they were just, it felt like they were saying hi to everyone. I was like, how do you guys know all of these people? And I was like, oh, I haven't talked to them since like my freshman year. And I'm like, what? 
<laughs> like you guys almost seem like best friends. Um, and I guess a little tangent story. When I first came here for my very first trip, it was like torrential downpouring. Like when we were leaving campus, like there were trees falling down, like flooding, the siren was going off. It was like insane and I still chose this place. <laughs> But it was just like, even people in the community, like my mom and I had, had like stopped and got some pizza, but people were like holding up um, umbrellas for us to like run across um, the little circle in the village just to get to our car so we can get there dry. Like, it's just, everyone is so invested in seeing each other grow and are just genuinely nice people. Not to necessarily get anything from you, but just nice to be nice. So the community is absolutely incredible. Awesome. Thank you. So we had um, a pretty poignant question come through on the chat. So um, I'll pose this to whoever wants to answer it because I would think it's pretty personal. So as an opportunity program student, have you ever found yourself experiencing imposter syndrome or feeling like you were falling behind academically? Whoever wants to answer that, go for it. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't make me call on someone. <laughs> I, I can buy them some time. Oh no, go ahead, Crystal. Well, I think there are, I think there for all of us, there is always some point in our academic career that we felt like we are a little behind. And sometimes just situation based. And especially for us, like we went through the whole almost the whole it, it hasn't it isn't done yet, but we went through a big chunk of the pandemic. And so that is a, a whole different struggle in itself. But I think there are definitely times where I feel like, oh, I'm super behind. I'm not at my normal pace, um, but it just takes a lot of uh, courage to reach out to ask for help, ask for extensions and ask for um, advice and talking to people. I also tutor on campus as well. So they, uh, most of my two teachers finished an exam and they would, we would just like talk about how the exam went and they'll talk about it. So it's like, there are resources, whether it's talking to your peers or whatnot about like what's going on. Um, and so taking a breather, uh, but I think everyone has some sort of struggle. It's just very invisible in a big campus, in, in sort of a big campus where everyone felt like they may seem that they are all on top or very smart, um, but everyone has their own struggles. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that answer and your honesty about such a personal question. So we had an awesome question that I didn't even think of that's on my list. Denzel, favorite class at Hamilton? Introduction of public policy because it made me become a public policy major, so. Love it. Um, Kayla? I've taken too many. Um, <laughs> there's some, there've been some really, really good ones. I think my favorite for various reasons was philosophy and, and incarceration. Ooh, interesting. We'll have to talk about that. Crystal? There's a lot. Um, <laughs> I'll just name a few. So okay. I've taken a literature class on disability in, in literature and film. So that was amazing my first year. Um, I took a class called Structural Biology and that was actually the class that got me really into research and sort of find, finding what subset of research I'm interested in. Um, I took a class called Organic Synthesis Towards Human Health um, where I wrote this whole research proposal and I think it was really cool. And I'm currently taking this class um, on sort of the it's a social hierarchy class um, in, in the chemistry department where we talk about what is science. We talk in this, the whole class based on the nuclear war, World War II, um, the dropping of the atomic bomb, and also the Flint water crisis. So a lot of social systemic issues, which I think was really interesting. That involves science, um, yeah. Awesome. So Aaron, we got a chat uh, or a question in the chat about the weekly voucher. So we're getting close to the end and you're super long winded. So can you talk a little bit more about the voucher quickly? All right, cool. I'm gonna have to pass it to the students. I, I don't know. Denzel? Weekly voucher? I. <laughs> I'm confused actually as, as <laughs> during the program is it is it like this are you talking about the stipend I'm not sure what the question is referring to stipend oh man I don't oh that was a long time ago I don't actually remember like the exact amount I just yeah they give you I think it's they give you like a they give you a certain 
sum of money during the summer. Like I think it's every week. I'm not sure if it, I think it was every week. Um, yeah, I don't really remember the specifics. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So um, know that Aaron is around if you need something. He doesn't know right now, but he's really good at being resourceful. So he will figure it out for you. Um, we also had a pretty important question, which is a great one. What about medical services nearby in case of an emergency? Do any of you want to answer that? I can take it as well. So we have a pretty robust wellness center right on campus that uh, when you say wellness, there's also like the physical wellness there's also mental health wellness, but know that the, in the city of Utica, there is a couple of hospitals that are accessible to students. There's also um, a lot of urgent cares in the area. So if you need something, um, it's pretty easy for you to find. So now we have five minutes left and we are going to go view from the top as you are all removed a little bit from the process of choosing a, or selecting a school. What is your last bit of advice for students who are considering coming to Hamilton? What would you have told your 17, 16 year old self? Crystal, can you start us off? Um, I would definitely say that, I mean, college, picking a place to go for college for four years is a big decision. So I would say, talk to people. I mean, that's something that I didn't really do as well as much that I wish that I would have done. Talk to your peers in school, talk about how the process goes. And most of you probably done through the whole process already, um, but also really just zoning in like if, if what, what, what exactly do you like about the school? And once you're sort of like narrowing down your list, what are something that I can see myself doing in this, in this university or school or college uh, compared to another school? Um, do I envision myself studying in this place or do I envision myself doing a certain thing and getting to know more about the resources that are sometimes hidden um, and you can only really see or get to when you're on, on campus. So, yeah. Thank you. Kayla or Denzel, either one of you ready? Yeah, sure. I would say, um, you know, research to the schools that you're um, really interested in and, and make sure that you know, um, like trust yourself and make sure the fit is right. Cause like Crystal said, it is a four year commitment. And like, when you're going into it, you might not like immediately think like four years, but four years is like a, a good amount of time, substantial amount of time. And so just make sure that like, it feels right to you. You can envision yourself being there and that you, you really feel like in your gut that this is the right place for you because a lot of times it's a really good indicator of like where you want to be. Awesome. Kayla? Well, then I'll take my line. I was going to say, trust your gut. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Um, but right. also kind of building off of what um, Crystal and Denzel have said, really get a feel for the people. If you can try to get onto campus and then from there, really see what your gut says. Like if I mean, if it, I'm always one for instincts. So if it feels right, <laughs> more than likely it is right. Awesome. Aaron, lasting pieces of advice for our future Hamilton cohort of OP students. Yeah, I mean, you all have probably been admitted into some fantastic institutions and I can't speak for them, but I can speak for Hamilton and I can speak for the Opportunity Program. This is an institution and a program that will have your back through the highs and through the lows. Um, and there's not many institutions that can say that. So um, if that's what you're looking for, that's what you want, you have a, a pretty good decision to make. Awesome. So to end us, for us to end and close out here, we have a great question, which is I think a student favorite this year, a prospective student favorite. So if everyone could please share their favorite Hamilton tradition, Erin, you will go last. So you have some time to look something up on the website. Um, Kayla, you could go first. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's the one that came to mind first. Uh, usually on Accepted Students Day and or a family weekend, um, the streaking team will make an appearance across campus. <laughs> and I wouldn't say it's a tradition, but it's, it's always pretty funny. I was shook on my Accepted Students Day. But they've been in hiding, I think, probably because of COVID and everything. But yeah. <laughs> I love thank them. you, <laughs> Denzel. Um, I really like, um, I forgot like the official name, but it's like the OP uh, Parents Day where like your parents get to like come up and interact with OP staff. Like that was really fun. Like my, my mom had never been 
up to Hamilton really to see the campus extensively. Like she had, we had driven up, but she hadn't like really gotten to explore and talk with other parents and stuff and like talk with OP staff. And that was, that was a lot of fun for her. And she told me she really enjoyed that. And so that was really cool. Awesome. Crystal. Um, it's been a while now, um, but I really like the tradition of um, in like finals week um, in the library, they would open for 24 hours and during finals week, they would host like they would serve free like breakfast food. Um, that is my favorite because sometimes you're hungry and you might not want to walk outside and food <laughs> is right there and it is actually not bad um, and snacks and coffees and stuff. So um, I like that tradition. Awesome. Aaron, did you come up with something you'd like to share? Yeah, I was recently a judge for the public speaking competition, um, Ooh, which is in, in the age of COVID, a little bit, you know, Zoom, but when it's in person, it's a really big ordeal and, and the students put together some incredible speeches. They get to pick whatever topics they, they want to do. Um, and it's it's typically there's food and students win prizes. So I think that that's something that's really cool. Hamilton's very big on public speaking. That is awesome. So thank you everyone so much for joining us. For all of our admitted students, know that there are other ways to engage with us and more Hamilton Hangouts um, that are coming up. Also for all of our OP students, Aaron and I are hosting another set of drop-in hours tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you'd like to join us for tomorrow evening, that would be awesome. We are so, so happy that you're able to join us this year. Um, and we can't really wait to see you on campus. My colleague is putting in some information on how to find our other events, as well as my email. Um, and I'd love to hear from you if you have any further questions. But thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much to our students and Aaron for spending this hour with us. We appreciate you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Everyone. You're most welcome. You like entrance and exit music. Yeah, we do. Great job, everyone.